Hey guys and welcome to a brand new video here on FBL Now. Today we're going to be going over a potential wildcard draft for game week 21. So if you're excited for the video, make sure to drop a like down below. Let's try and hit 50 likes. Leave a comment, are you thinking of wildcarding this week? Subscribe if you're brand new and let's get into the video. So starting things off, before we get into the wildcard draft, I just want to make you guys aware that even if you're really unhappy with your team, it's probably not the best time to wildcard because between game week 21 and 22, we're going to get a lot more information on doubles blanks and a lot of stuff like that and obviously if you're wild carding this week before all that it might completely change your mind uh, on your wild card draft so only wild card this week if you really really need to like you got a ton of injuries and you're just completely unhappy with your team but if your team's okay and you can get through game week 21 i would very much um just I just recommend to hold off until between game week 21 and 22 because, as I said, that's where all the doubles are happening, the blanks and stuff. We're going to get a lot of information about, like, blank game week 25, 28, the doubles, all that stuff. Anyway, let us get into the wildcard draft if you are thinking of wildcarding this week. And again, in goal, I've still got Kepa and Ward. There are better options than Kepa, in my opinion, but you've got Pope, who's probably going to blank in 25. You've got De Gea, who's going to blank in 25. You've got Sanchez, who could potentially blank in 25. You've got Rea, who could potentially blank in 25 that's just because of all the carabao cup games um with the semi-finals and stuff so that's why i've kind of just that's why i've gone with kepa but again if i was wild carding this uh, next week and we find out like more information and stuff or whatever you, you might be going for someone different but kepa's still not a bad shout like obviously they've got liverpool away this week which isn't great but i mean both liverpool and chelsea aren't exactly playing and like fantastic at the moment and as well as that you know after liverpool he's got fulham west ham southampton then he's got tottenham but then he's got leeds leicester everton villa wolves brighton so for 4.5 it's not the worst keeper in the world and you know chelsea's still an they're a good team, you know. They are. It's not like they're just the worst team in the league. Yeah, they're on a bad run of form, but so are Liverpool. You know, you could say the same about Spurs. You know, they're picking up a couple of losses here and there. But um, yeah, for 4.5 mil, I still think he's arguably one of the better options. But again, if doubles get announced for like United or something, De Gea might be someone that you want to target. Again, Ramsdale is another option, but again, you probably want three outfield Arsenal players and you don't want uh, Ramsdale in goal. And then Ward's the other keeper as well. I don't necessarily think you even need Ward, to be fair. Like, even this week where you might play him over um, Kepa against Liverpool because um, he's got Brian at home. Brian is still scoring so many goals and Leicester have been absolutely awful at the moment. So I still wouldn't even play uh, Ward over Kepa this week, especially after, um, you know, how... I, I mean, it's just... They're just terrible at the moment, like Leicester. They've got so many injuries, and I'm sorry to all the Leicester fans, but I guess you can agree. You know, I went through it as a Forest fan, with, like, beginning of the season. It's just what happens, you know. Some teams just take a bit of time uh, to, to find their feet. But, um, yeah, Leicester, I mean, they're, they're, they're just missing so many key players. And, um, yeah, I don't think I'd go anywhere near any Leicester players at the at, at the moment. So, if you even wanted to downgrade them to a 4 mil keeper to get an extra 0.1 mil, I wouldn't even like be against that. Uh, next up, the back line consists of White, Ake, Bueno, Shaw, and Trippier. Ake could easily be a Kanji, but again, you do want that City defender that is likely to play. I mean, you could go Walker as well, who also potentially could play. Um, but yeah, you need that information because obviously the double that's happening in 23-4 uh, City. So again, you could go Edison instead of Ake um, and have a different defender there. But I've just not got enough money in this draft to be able to do that because of the outfield players that I've got. Edison obviously is a lot more secure as a defending option for a City uh, player. But again, at the same time, if you want a little bit of a cheaper um, kind of way into that City defense, I think Ake's numbers are, are pretty decent minutes wise. You know, he's pretty much... Um, played like a lot of the games recently and you know he's been he's been in pep's favor quite a bit as well so again you could go somebody else if you really want to do or play edison for a little bit of a safer kind of route to that city defense if you have the money but i don't for this draft hence why i have to play Ake. and then bueno again just 3.9 mil um just in here because i don't have enough money to bring in anyone else but he's still a player that's going to play you know he's, he's been all good and and i mean wolves not great at the moment but they do have some nice fixtures coming up especially in that blank game with 25 you know fulham away isn't the worst fixture in the world um which is obviously when you're going to need your bench and stuff and then we've also got Shaw and trippier again two players that are going to blank in 25 um uh, most likely if they do get through to um the final of the carabao cup and stuff um so again that's that's what i mean like you don't want to be overhauling too many brighton united newcastle uh brentford uh, players and stuff because again you're just going to be in a massive situation in blank gaming 25 when you're making like when you're kind of sorting out your wild card you really need to think ahead um because you're not playing your wild card just for the next week you're playing your wild card for the next like seven or eight weeks um but anyway that's the back line there i mean very happy with white as an option obviously i think he's arguably one of the better 
Arsenal players you can have in your squad right now. He's a lot cheaper than Saliba and Gabriel and stuff. And he's picking up bonus points left, right, and center. Trippier obviously loves a bonus point. He should be in every single um, team regardless. I mean, you don't necessarily need Shaw, but they most likely are going to have another double soon. And they've got really nice fixtures coming up as well. I think a United triple up is okay, but I don't know who else you'd really bring in. Like, bar Rashford... Who else would you really go for? Like maybe Ericsson or Casemiro. But again, it's probably, it's not worth the the, the spot they're going to be taking up just for like one double. But either way, that's the back line. Uh, relatively happy with it. Of course, there's no premiums there. There's no Cancelo, Robertson, Trent and stuff. But I don't think we'd go anywhere near them regardless. The midfield consists of Saka, De Bruyne, Rashford, Andres Pereira and Erdegaard. I've got no uh, no Martinelli in this draft. I've opted for Erdegaard instead, um, just simply because his numbers are a little bit better than Martinelli's. He is a little bit... I mean, they're kind of the same price now anyway, but obviously if you got Martinelli from the beginning of the season, you would have saved a lot of money, but... If you don't want Martinelli anymore, Erdegaard is a really nice option. You know, I, I definitely want him in my squad 100%. And I've gone Saka just because he's got penalties. He is a bit more expensive than the other two, like 1.2, 1.3 more. Um, but at the same time, penalties, really, really nice. And he's just been so attacking um, this season. He's having a really, really good season. So I would opt to go for Saka if you have the money. If you don't, then obviously Martinelli and Erdegaard is still okay. But yeah, I mean, the, the whole fact that he's on penalties and stuff is really nice. Uh, De Bruyne is in there as well because obviously game week 23. And um, he's just one of the nailed City players really that is going to play every single game he is a bit of a, a pricey uh player to have but again at the same time you, you're paying for what you get he's been very unlucky not to have more returns only one assist i think since the restart um but at the same time he should have had a lot more than that he's just been very unlucky as a de bruyne owner uh, and then rashford a bit of a no-brainer just in an incredible form um get a guaranteed starter again i'm pretty sure he's not on pens i know he took one in the cup against um who was it against uh whoever when bruno was on the pitch but either way he's not he's i don't think he's on pens and yeah, Andres Pereira as well, uh, 4.5. This could be anyone that's like 4.5, though. It could be a buy. Uh, if you have a little bit extra money, you could always bring in March, who's like 5.1. But again, March is going to be another player that potentially blanks in game week 25 um, due to the Carabao Cup games as well. So again, you don't want to like load up on all of these players that are going to blank because if, if you don't, especially if you don't have your free hit, you're going to be in a really bad situation in game week 25 where you're only going to have like nine or eight players or whatever. And then, yeah, Odegaard. So that's the midfield. Relatively happy with it. Um, you've got your triple Arsenal there. You've obviously got your triple City, which we're going to go over in a second. Uh, you've got double United as well. Again, only one Newcastle player in this draft. But um, again, if you bring in the likes of Almiron and, and Wilson and stuff like that, it is literally just more players that are most likely not going to play in Game Week 25. Again, though, if, um, you know, Game Week 25, Newcastle aren't through and you know they do get knocked out then that's when you start looking at newcastle players as other options and stuff i know there's no almron in this draft as well which is also a little bit surprising but at the same time since the restart he's only had like three shots in the box like his numbers are actually a lot lower um since the restart so i don't think he's necessarily someone you have to own right now um he has stopped scoring worldies and um yeah i think that there are probably better options around the midfield um price point of him that you could have instead so anyway that's the midfield up top we have mitrovic uh harland and kane Again, Mitrovic could be Tony if you have the money, but again, another player that might blank in game week 25, so is it really worth it? And uh, I know that Mitrovic has some tough fixtures coming up, but Tottenham and Chelsea, both at the back, haven't been too good lately. Um, so yeah, I mean, Mitrovic has been really annoying to own, you know, missing the penalties and stuff, getting yellow cards left, right, and center. But at the same time, he's still a really nice option. I think he's going to bang soon as well, and I think he is going to make everyone that sold him regret it. But again, if you want to get rid of him for a Wilson and or a Tony, uh, bank, uh, banking on the fact that they might not blank in 25, then, you know, that's that's your choice. And then Haaland and Kane as well, I think just two players that I think you just have to have in your team. I mean, maybe not so much Kane, but at the same time, you know, he's, he's had a really, really good season so far. I know he blanked against Arsenal, but he could have scored uh, a couple of goals in that game. He does like playing City as well. We'll, see after, we'll have to see what happens on Thursday with the City-Spurs um, game, but even after that, he's got Fulham next week. And then, yeah, City again. But after that, he's got some really nice fixtures as well. I just, I don't know. I really like having Kane as an option. He's on pens. You've got quite a lot of penalty kick takers in this um, in this draft. You've got three up top. You've got Saka as well in midfield. Um, so that's four penalty uh, penalty takers, which is pretty nice. Um, but yeah, that's the wildcard draft for game week 21. As I said, like, I would only wildcard this week if you really, really need to. If you've got a bunch of injuries, players that, like not playing, like you've got your Trossard and stuff that are out of favor or whatever, or just left the country. Um, but yeah, I would... If you could survive game week 21, 
um, maybe, you know, playing a bench player or something that you wouldn't usually play. It'd be much more beneficial to play your wild card um, next week when we have a lot more information about, um, like I said, the doubles, the blanks and everything. But either way, that's a wild card draft that I've come up with. If you guys enjoyed the video, please do consider hitting the like button down below. Let's try and hit 50 likes. Leave a comment. Are you thinking of wild carding? Uh, what do you think of this wild card draft? You love it, you hate it. Let me know your thoughts. Um, subscribe if you're brand new. Ring the notification bell. That's going to be everything from me, though. Have a fantastic rest of your day. And until next time, peace.